I'm gonna show you how to make a drink that's about as classic as classic can get, the Manhattan. Manhattan dates back to about the 1860s, a long time ago when it was invented, when vermouth came over from Europe to America, and Americans being the cocktail innovators that they were, decided to mix it with their favorite cocktail ingredient, whiskey, and the Manhattan was born. So we're gonna start by using our base, whiskey, two and a half ounces of rye whiskey. I'm using rye whiskey as opposed to bourbon, which is what a lot of people use to make Manhattans. I'm using rye because it's historically accurate for one. Back in the 1860s, rye was a little more popular than the bourbon, and so that's how the Manhattan was originally made. I also think it makes a little bit of a better drink because rye is made of 51% rye grain by law, as opposed to bourbon, which is 51% corn. So bourbon is a little sweeter, whereas rye is a little bit sharper and I think comes through better in the drink. But if you prefer bourbon Manhattans, don't let me stop you. So that's two and a half ounces of rye whiskey. And now the vermouth. I'm gonna do three quarters of an ounce vermouth. And again, the proportions, you know, if you prefer something that's a little more whiskey for it or maybe something with a little more vermouth in it, feel free to take some liberties. This is just general guidelines. Three quarters ounce vermouth. An important note about vermouth is that you really should refrigerate it once it's been opened. Even though it's been fortified with a little bit of alcohol, it's still wine-based, so it will oxidize like wine and it will go bad. And since we only use, you know, three quarters to an ounce at a time, uh, you go, it takes a long time to move through an entire bottle of vermouth. So remember, keep your vermouth in the fridge or else it will go bad. And now our final ingredient, just a three ingredient drink, about as easy as it gets, is our bitters. This is Angostura bitters, definitely the most common bitters that you'll find. You can even buy them in most bodegas, which is funny because they actually are 44.7% alcohol, higher proof than a lot of whiskeys, and any kid can buy them. So if you see a kid chugging Angostura bitters, tell them that you're onto them. But I don't know why you would do that because I do not recommend drinking these by themselves. They don't call them bitters for nothing. So now two dashes of bitters. One, two, ooh, blow back. Again, we're making drinks, we're also making a mess. Okay, now we're done. And we are gonna stir this cocktail because all the ingredients are alcoholic. So we don't need to shake it because we just don't need to force the ingredients together as much. We just need to kind of gently coax them into mingling, if you will. And you can really fill it up with a lot of ice. I like to have the ice sort of just above the level of the drink so that it really gets in there. Now, when you're stirring, you're doing two things. You are chilling and diluting at the same time. And you're not stirring kind of like you're stirring cake batter, you know? It's just gently gliding around the outside of the glass. And stirring takes time to perfect so it's effortless when you're making cocktails. I mean, I used to go home and just stir water and ice, you know, after work and try to perfect it till it got to the point where it was effortless. So don't feel bad if it doesn't look as sexy as this. <laughs> About 20, 25 seconds of stirring should do it. And now it's time to strain our drink. I put a glass in the freezer so it'll get nice and cold and keep this freezing drink freezing. All right, nice frosty glass. And for our garnish, we're gonna use a cherry. These are the best cherries you can buy. They're called Luxardo cherries. They're a lot better than your normal uh, maraschino cherry. They're expensive, but totally worth it. And with our garnish, we are done. And that is how you make a Manhattan.